Yeah, a lot of work ahead of me. That line, that line has got to match up to that one. No ifs or buts. That's going to be the tricky bit. Once we've got the thing hinged, we can move on. What could possibly go wrong? Welcome back. Nice to see you again. Right. I feel like a school kid today. I'm dead excited about this. Absolutely dead excited. Now, I apologise in advance for the speckles on the lens. Um, there is not much I can do about it. I did some welding when I first got this camera. No, grinding. And I stupidly forgot that the grinding dust Where's that gone? Yeah, the grinding dust, um, sparks, muck up glass, and it hit the lens, and I've never been able to get rid of it since. But as soon as I can get my hands on a wide angle lens, um, for my other camera, I will start using that and have a plug-in microphone. So wherever I am on the film, distance or close, you should be able to hear me equally. That's the plan anyway, and we'll use this one as background camera. Now, I've been out today, MOT passed, and I picked my wheels up. 125 quid. Ta da I am so happy about these. So, I've got four matching wheels. I thought there was five matching ones, but that one's just a standard Land Rover. I did see it in the pictures, and I thought to myself, is that a space saver? Because that's really skinny in comparison. Not to worry, because that one, I'm going to put on here anyway. That one's flat. And that seems to be a little more narrower on the offset as well. So hopefully, I'll have to measure it first. Hopefully we can get that through the alleyway. Uh, we can take that off, cut that rim up with the tire on and scrap that rim. Because we don't want, I don't want these Range Rover rims. Unless there's somebody out there watching that's interested in buying these rims. There's, there's four of them. I don't want them. Don't know if anyone's doing a resto. Not just one door, I managed to buy another door for the other side. So the whole lot has cost me 45 quid. So and uh, uh, that's resting roughly where it's going to go. But I did make a massive misjudgment, and that is that arch. I forgot that they have a bolt-in archway. Hmm. An error on my part. Well, there's definitely no coming back from that. So I am now committed. <laughs> oh. I've added the metal to that bulkhead. I'm going to have to put some strengtheners in there for definite now. I mean, I was planning to put angle iron along there anyway, so definitely going to be doing that now. Um, most of that roof will be gone. The bulkhead will be gone. I just want to get the first door hung. Um, give myself some ideas of where I'm heading with this and then the same on the other side I will probably once I've got the hinge for the other side well, no I don't even need the hinge I just need to get in there get the hydraulic pack out cut these blinking wires to the old ECU that I was using get the speakers out get this stuff up because it's flammable as hell and I'm having troubles with that um, and then we can chop the other side, but I think I might have to remove the driver's door because it's right where I'm plasma cutting and I don't want to destroy any of the electrics that are in there. I've removed the airbags from them, so... I don't matter if I do cut a few wires, I just don't want to cut all the wires. Anyway... I'm going to establish where this door's going to hang. Once I've established that. Um, actually, I'm not going to cut the other side out yet. I might cut half the bulkhead out, but that's about as far as I'm going to go with it. I think. Take those screws out, see if I can get rid of that sealant that that's all pinned to. Um, and maybe just cut along that back and uh, along. Um, and that's probably all I really need to do at this point in time. Okay, so I put, I put a second mark in here. 
that represents the line in here. We've got a bit of a problem. Um, that's why I put it together, because I never intended for doors. And I added this little piece here, because I didn't follow the shape there on the inside of this structure. And I don't want to cut that out. Um, so what I might do is the hinges on here. Now, if you can see, there's an insert there. I would have to cut a hole out top and bottom to sink those hinges in, recut this line, pretty much go from there. So what I'm going to do instead, because it's not possible to do, well I can do it with a plasma cutter, but I don't want to. And I want to weld these hinges in place. Um, a lot of modern cars now do have the hinges welded to the door posts and you have to unbolt them from the car itself. So there's no, there's no big deal involved in this. And I can always take those screws out and replace them with Allen keys if I need to drop the door at any point. So I'm going to weld blocks of one inch box on there, on each hinge. So I'll take it to shed in a little while, grind it back. And then I'm just going to literally measure the hinge width, measure this width from that point there out, recut all the way down, possibly cut a, a, an extra cut there and then across and then take that bit out completely so I can reshape and reform that piece um, and then pretty much weld them in it will leave me with another problem that can be dealt with after and that is tidying up this edge and making it a bit more stronger I don't really want an open piece of metal there you go, they're welded on. It does actually make my life a little bit easier. I may have to grind back some of that to get it flush, but this is not easy, I will tell you that. Right, that's not welded on yet. You can see why I suggested about removing that bulkhead when this is in place, but it doesn't do me much good anyway because I'm still stuck and jammed up down the bottom. So I'm never really going to capture that line until I cut that bottom off. Uh, might pay me just to go uphill slightly. What with the shape of everything that's going on, that wouldn't be a bad thing, going uphill and then building the bottom sills up. Could look quite good to be honest with you. You know everything's going downhill, but when we get to the roof, it goes flat. That is how the Morris Minor actually does go. Yeah. Now you get your first look. Weird, isn't it? Right, well I'm spending too much time sitting here thinking. I'll tell you why I'm thinking. Tack welded the hinges on. Watch. That's a problem. Because that's as far as I can open the blooming thing. Don't get me wrong, when that door goes all the way down to there, that's a big space to get in and out of, but it's still going to hit. Um, I'm not quite sure what has gone wrong. I had that line perfectly, other than the fact that this was sitting above that door is the only thing I can think of. So it kind of leaves me with one option, or one option only. I'm going to have to cut from here, or where, wherever, uh, from about there I reckon, all the way down here. And I'm going to have to get a piece of angle cut it like I did with the roof piece at the back and weld it up on the inside so it's just below the edge so it don't hit. I don't have any choice. I just can't see any other way around it other than putting external hinges on. I much prefer the external hinges but he doesn't have any more vans down there with those on. And to be honest they weren't that great. Um, I mean they're, they're better than they were but they're not that great. And they make the doors stick proud of the metalwork as well. That's the other problem I've noticed with them. Um, whereas this one is actually more flush than what they are. But I was, because we did speak about a gutter going around, I was thinking about cutting the gutter off there anyway and welding a new one in, but having it all the way down there and up so it stops the wind from blowing through. But that's something for later on, that's not for now. Right, I've had to pull this out a little bit and you can see it now overlaps, which is not what I wanted. 
but it does give me just about enough clearance to get that door wide open. Obviously, there'll be a, a, a restraining strap to stop it from going any further, but it has left. Yeah, that's the other problem. Um, it has left a big thing, a big gap, and that's left a step, which we didn't want. But what we can do, this is feasible, very feasible, um, rebuild this, because this is just a piece of metal over the top, the original line is there. Uh, we can keep that curve there, but we can go dead straight there, straight down, and then here we can actually build it out to there because it's it's that lot you watch you see what i mean it, it clears so if i was to come off on the inside edge weld all down that side come off on the inside edge and then build it out to that edge it will clear and it will still stop the drafts from getting in um but the door seals themselves when i build them will be sealing against this edge here so it'll come off that line there and come out all the way around. Uh, here, we'll just build a flat plate in there and then come out there a little bit so it touches onto here. Same along there and along there when I get to that curve, if I keep the curve. So, yeah, I've kind of gone as far as I can go with this today. It's getting a little cold out here now. Um, nightmare. I love the idea of having that door on the back. But I'm going to be absolutely honest as hell with you all. That ain't working. Those lines on that window and that wheel arch is not working. The back frame is made enough. It is a little out. But I can pull that back in when I start putting all the rods and um, other bits and bobs in place. Do I wish I never cut that bulkhead out? No. Um, do I regret a little bit? Maybe. But, that's no good sulking. Let's move on with it. Um, I always had intentions in taking the bulkhead out and some of the roof. I just never intended to take the side pieces out, which I desperately needed to work the scales out on, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, uh, damage done. Nothing I can do about it. Can't put it back. At least I don't think I can put it back. Uh, <laughs> I've cut too much out. Oops. Yeah, I ain't going back. Um, as for the door itself, well, I've just wiped out close to 100 quid, I suppose. Morning, guys. Right, I had time to think about this. Yesterday was a bit of a disastrous day. If it could go wrong, it did go wrong. As simple as that. Um... We're going to have to approach this door from a different angle. We did speak briefly about that. I meant what I said about the door. Um, I want it. I don't... I, I need the door. Cutting it... Cutting it basic. Um, I ain't really sure what I'm doing with it though. How I'm going to do it. This line is a nuisance. That line is a bleeding nuisance. Um, everything is a nuisance on it. Okay. There's no coming back from that, is there? Right, I cut it out. I overlaid it. I had to put an extension out to here. I didn't have any choice because, as you can see, that window there, yeah. I want to try and use everything original. So I've overlaid it. The welding's not great. I've never been a tin welding man. I'm not very good at it. I could have put a crease around there for it to sink down into. I chose not to. Whether I'm going to pay for that later on, I don't know. Okay. Just ground that down gently. Not too much. We'll put filler around them. Try and blend that all in with some filler. I'm afraid to say that a lot of this, and I planned it from the beginning, that there will be a fair bit of filler around some of these areas and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. Right, we've got a little bit more tidying to do. I'm just debating at this point in time whether to just put a piece of fiberglass stripping over the top of that screwed. That way I can get access to what I need to get access to. 
up here I've still got to build that area up as you can see where the door handle is we've still got to tip this thing over on its side and sand all of that down ready for filler to go on but I would say other than that I think we have done quite a good job here we're on the home straight we've just got where are we the bottom to do but there you go that's that corner piece done I wasn't sure how this was all going together you see that's kind of why I ended up being having all of that cut out because I thought I'd get away with just putting it to the framework but no alas not um, I'm happy enough with that might give me an excuse to call it a rat rod again <laughs> but yeah um, I've just got to get I've got to find the other stainless steel piece there because I need to replace the one I took off there once I've um, cleaned up that area but yeah I mean come on considering that's not bad going the bottom is done as well I ain't put the the welds in at the bottom yet but I'm I'm thinking happy with that Oh, I ain't working. Bollocks. Ain't working at all. I think that door more aggro than it's worth. I had to cut top hinge because it wasn't sitting square on the post. It's, it's, it's horrendous. I've still possibly got to cut the bottom of the door out even more because the um, wheel arch, you can see, is going to be the same shape. So I kind of think, and now I've wiped out enough time. Should we take that off? My life would be made so much easier. I ain't joking, so much easier. If I just literally welded steels across the floor, across the middle, put in a few more curves because I've knocked that one out completely. So I get some angle iron I've got in the shed. We can reinstate um, so we can put curves where we need to put them and just lose the door. Back frame's okay, that's kind of working. Not perfectly, but it is kind of working. Cut the rest of that bulkhead out. The door ain't even big enough. I mean, you get tools and stuff in there, but let's be honest about it, look. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I don't know. The hinges are trash. And making up a frame to work around that is going to be so difficult. Especially when I've got to put wheel arch in it. Whereas if I just put straight steel straight across, I can make the wheel arches up in the shed. And then I can mark out on the steel where to go. Cut the steel, slide it in. Make some reinforcement steels to go around the plastic fiberglass. And that's it, it's done. Bolt that to the frame literally bolt it to the frame and then skin up and one of my ideas was was nipping down the metal merchants which is going to be an expensive experience i'm sure and getting a sheet of four foot wide by eight and getting a engineering shop to quickly guillotine it down the middle and then i can do steel sides i'm not saying this will happen all right let's not get too carried away but we could do steel sides and then we could do the alley tops on the alley roof. Actually don't have anything else I can offer on that. At all. <sighs> hmm. What was I thinking? What a shame, huh? Put 
put a lot of time into that. But if you can't get it to work, you can't get it to work. And I cannot get that to work. Um, and I've still got more challenges coming with that door when it comes to going over the wheel arch. So I'm kind of thinking, I am in a hurry to get this done. As I said to you, I need this out the front. And summertime will hit soon. And I won't be able to run the grinders as much because I have a problem, well, had a problem, do have a problem with a neighbour. And I don't want to go out of my way to wind them up, obviously. So, um, I'm trying to get it done as quick as possible. That isn't going to work. Not in its current form. The hinges are sh just rubbish. They're just rubbish. So, now that I've completely destroyed the side, unnecessarily, I'm going to look up and onwards, and I'm going to try and build off that. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to add a bar, box, angle, whatever, along here, coming out. And we'll cut a piece of box to go in there and weld it into here somewhere. And uh, then we'll take a template line off that side, or possibly this, and try and add another one to here. So I can put that corner back, basically. And then I'm going to come across here, I reckon, where there'll be another one of those, and then there'll be another one here. And I'm just going to concentrate this week, or what's left of it anyway, on this one side. I can then run a bar through the middle, and I can lock it in. That's going to be two foot high, or just, uh, um, yeah, just, just under two foot, I reckon, actually. I want a couple of mil overhang on the tin if I do go with the uh, steel idea because that will give me somewhere where I can rivet on another piece of alley or something or tin even so I think this is going to be the quickest and the easiest way to do this and I'll get rid of these and I may very well cut that out and weld a new one in or weld to it I just don't know yet which probably better off just removing it and butt welding another piece of tin and then we can start concentrating on those bits under the door and cutting out all the old bits that you can see and just basically reshaping and tidying up if, we, if it's possible to do that door is a mess at the bottom I mean the other thing I could do and, and I'm not doing it alright I'm not doing it but I could do it was extend that door out that way all I've got is this bounces forward and you've got the slider which is a bit jammed up at the moment so there is a possibility of being able to get into the back through there if need be the other problem is, is that door post goes off to an angle instead of being dead straight as you can see from the door line it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top it wasn't intentional, it's just the way it ended up. I'd have to cut the whole of the top off, pull that out a little bit, cut the bottom, push that in a little bit, and then that door would probably sit absolutely smack bang accurate. I could rebuild that post, but as I said before, there's just too many factors. It's making this job too long-winded. I mean, I spent a whole day on it. I'm a little bit gutted. I'm not putting it in, but it isn't working. So, end the story on the subject. So, uh, yeah. I suppose we better start measuring and cutting. And I as they say, a new week is a new start. So I think I might close this video today and upload. It's been a week of experimentation. That's all I can say on it. We have the rear frame established, but I need to go higher with that. I need to cut the remainder of this out here. And what I plan to do is put in a piece of angle iron that is one inch from here, almost flush as it goes to there, and then about halfway up, we'll then bend it to go in. I've measured this, a six by four piece of steel sheet will work wonders and I don't think it's going to be terribly expensive now I've been saving up for a bike test which I don't, I don't think is going to happen to be honest so I'm going to break in to some of that money in order 
to get this van body built because I kind of want this out the front. That's why I've abandoned that door idea. I also need to raise that height a little higher. I'm glad I didn't weld that in. I was going to, but you can see the slope on that. I don't think that's going to work. I think that does need to go up just a tiny bit higher. And then we'll use some more steel and we'll go flat here, up, and then in at an angle there. As well, that's, that's, that's going to be my easiest way of doing it for speed. Now I could mimic, um, I could mimic that shape, but on the Morris Minor Traveller, uh, it's it's all flat and I'm still not dismissing the wood side of it as yet so what I'm thinking of doing is angle iron I've spoken about on the outside but the flat piece will be on the inside and we'll use the other angle iron we've got or box steel sorry and we'll we'll quite literally we'll weld a piece of metal on the inside edge of that all the way along and then we'll put the tin in and then the wood can sit on the outside against the steel supports um, it might work you never know I don't really want to cut the metal in half but at the same time I don't really want to do the whole bottom half in wood either so I've got some figuring to do a lot of figuring out to do actually uh, so yeah we might just go angle on the outside edge Generally, I don't, I don't really know fully where I'm heading with this, so we've got a flat surface there, but I haven't got any angle arm wide enough. I've only got this stuff. I could chop that down and weld that flat edge here on the inside edge all the way up and then shape the blunt edge accordingly. I would like to do wood at the top. I ain't going to deny that. That could look quite nice and would be in, in keeping with what I'm doing. The bottom half really does need to be solid steel and it needs to be flush all the way through because of the wheel arch. Otherwise I've got to sit there and I've got to put wood all the way around everything and go up and that's too much, it's too much. So, this week hasn't been an entire failure, not entirely. I mean, as I said, it's been a week of experiments. That ain't going to go to waste. I might make a cupboard out of that. Put that one back on the internet. Um, somebody who's into Morris Miners who has a man cave might want that. You never know. So, the yeah. I'm not going to feel depressed about this, even though I was really angry about it earlier on in the day. I was fuming over this. I was throwing my toys around everywhere in temper. But there's just no point getting upset over it. It didn't work. I gave it my best. And that's all you can ever ask of a person, in my opinion. So, next week, today's Thursday. I'm going to get this video sorted out, upload it tomorrow morning or later on tonight, I don't know yet. The other video has gone stagnant, 186 views, so getting higher and higher, uh, slowly. So, tomorrow I'll raise the height of that, get that line a little bit higher up, we'll get the plasma cutter out tomorrow, and we'll start hacking all of this old metal off, so we've got something to build to. I'll weld in if it's not raining tomorrow because it's not being very good very kind today I'll try and put some angle in down there so I can cut this entire rear bulkhead out I really do need to get rid of that that's being a nuisance now um, and we'll go from there and then we'll start putting straps straps yeah straps so we'll start building this edge here out and we'll start putting straps in that line here does actually represent where that curve is over there that I had over here that I don't have anymore. 
so I'm not quite sure how this is all going to go. I'm assuming at this point that... Oh, God, I need to have a clear-up as I'm tripping over everything. It went in something like that. And like that, or... But that's shown a lot higher up there. And look, and you can see I'm, I'm too low. So I need to work out my heights. I need to raise this back end a little higher up. But it's not working. Just a little bit. Probably another, another two inches wouldn't be a bad thing. Unfortunately, the only two inch piece of steel I've got is this one. That's not quite long enough, but... I did speak about a tailgate, but that ain't going to happen now. And the beauty of doing a lip like that is if I do have something inside and it starts flying around, those doors are really weak. And that will fly through the doors. Or at least there's something there to stop it from shifting around. And I can always build a false floor on top of that if I want to, which will give me more room underneath um, for a fuel tank if I want to put a bigger tank in and anything else that might need to be done. I also need to replace that ball joint down there as well. That's not in very good condition. That's another job that needs sorting out. My Milwaukee will pull that apart very easily, I think. So next week, people, tune in and you should start seeing some decent progress. We tried our hardest with that. It didn't work. It's got there is too much work required to fit it. That post is on the wonk. And also I've noticed that line does not line up very well either. Something weird going on and I don't know what. Also, the inside edge here isn't that great either. You can see it's all wide down there. It's just not working. So I think the best thing is just to do away with the idea, the whole concept of it and uh, start again from scratch. Tomorrow I will try and organize some steel. So Monday, we can get right into this and we ain't got to wait around. Thank you very much for your views. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your likes. Uh, comments is what keep me ticking over with this and along with the likes as well. Um, sorry, at this point I should be facing you, shouldn't I? So yes, I, I'm very much grateful for all of the the help and advice you give please feel free to share and i'll see you monday morning no friday next week hopefully with some uh, more content from this poxy truck which is living up to its name scallywag really is living up to it at the moment see you later